Good afternoon. Welcome to Masterpiece Theater for the The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. I'm so glad you came back. Look who else came back. Hi, boys and girls. Hi, Sister Lou. Hi, Sister Pat. Hi, Daniel. Simba with you today? I don't need Simba today. You don't? Uh-uh. Because I know it's in the neighborhood of make believe and I don't have to be scared. Daniel, you're getting so grown up, just like my friend. But now, Daniel, do you know the number of the chapter that we're up to? Let's ask the boys and girls. Okay. All right, my friends. Which chapter are we up to in The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe? We'll give you a minute. Do, 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 did you hear that? I think so. I think they got it. What'd you say? Chapter four, you said? Yay! They got it on the nose on the money. <laughs> yeah. Now remember, you're gonna see a lot of the white witch. And you know, she is not nice at all at all. Yeah, but it's not, it's only pretend, it's not real. Correct, it's not real. But if you get frightened, and you need to hold someone's hand, that's fine. Or if you want to go and do something else, that's okay too, all right? So would you like to settle down so we can read it? Yeah, okay, <laughs> see you later. All right, let's get to it. Chapter four of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Now remember, Edmund was not being nice. He was not nice to his sister, Lucy. He did not believe her, he told everybody, all his brothers and sisters, don't believe her, she's just a baby. When Edmund had really gone into Narnia and he made fun of Lucy and that hurt Lucy's feelings. You know, when you're telling the truth and someone doesn't believe you, you get very upset. And Lucy went to bed very upset and Edmund went back into Narnia and he met the White Witch. Here we go. But what are you, said the queen again. Are you the overgrown dwarf that has cut off his beard? Oh, no, your majesty. I never had a beard. I am only a boy. A boy, she said. Do you mean you are a son of Adam? Edmund stood still and he said nothing. He was too confused by this time to understand what she meant. I see you don't know what you are, said the queen. Answer me at once or I shall lose my patience. Are you a human? Oh, yes, your majesty, said Edmund. And how is it that you came into my kingdom? Please, your majesty, I came in through the wardrobe. A wardrobe? What do you mean? Oh, uh, I opened the door and I found myself here, your majesty, said Edmund. Ah, said the queen, speaking more like yourself. A door, a door from the world of men. <laughs> I've heard of such things. Ah. This might wreck it all. But he only, but he is only one and can easily be dealt with. As she spoke those words, she rose from her seat and she looked at Edmund right in the face. And her eyes were flaming. And at the same moment, she raised her wand. Oh, Edmund felt sure that something dreadful was going to happen. He was unable to move. But just then, just as he gave himself up for lost, she appeared to change her mind. Oh, my poor child, she said. Oh, how cold you have come. Come and sit with me on my sleigh, and I shall put my mantle, my coat, around you, and we will talk. Oh, well, Edmund didn't like this arrangement at all, but he decided to obey her, and he stepped onto the sleigh and he sat at her feet and she put her fur coat right around him and she tucked him in well. Oh, perhaps you would like something to drink, said the queen. Uh, should you like that? Oh, yes, please, your majesty, said Edmund. <laughs> His teeth were chattering for he was so cold. The queen took from somewhere among her wrappings a very small bottle that was made of copper. Then holding her arm out, she let one drop fall in it from the snow, right beside the sleigh. 
Edmund saw the drop coming in midair, shining like a diamond. And at that moment, it touched the snow, and there was a hissing sound. And all of a sudden, there was a jeweled cup filled with something that was quite hot. The dwarf immediately took this and handed it to Edmund with a bow and a smile. But it was not a very nice smile. Edmund felt much better as he began to sip the drink. This was something I'd never tasted before. Very sweet and foamy and creamy, and it warmed him, warmed him right down to his toes. Here's the dwarf with it. When you're cold, there's nothing like a hot drink to warm you up. It is dull, son of Adam, to drink without eating, said the queen. Oh, what would you like to eat? Oh, Turkish delight, your majesty, said Edmund. Then she let another drop fall from her bottle onto the snow, and instantly there appeared a round box tied with a green silk ribbon, which when he opened it turned out to be several pounds, a whole lot of the best Turkish delight candy. Mm. Each piece was sweet and light to the very center. Oh, Edmund had never tasted anything so delicious. He was quite warm now and comfortable. While he was eating, the queen kept asking him questions. At first, Edmund tried to remember that it was rude not to speak with your mouth, to speak with your mouth full. But soon he forgot all about it because he kept shoveling in more Turkish delight. He ate and ate and ate, but he was wondering why the queen was asking him so many questions. She got him to tell her that he had one brother and two sisters, and that one of his sisters had already been in Narnia and met a fawn there, trouble in the neighborhood, and that no one except himself and his brothers and sisters knew anything about Narnia. She seemed quite especially interested in the fact that there were four of them and kept coming back to it. Uh, are you sure there are just four of you, she said, two sons of Adam and two daughters of Eve, and uh, no more, no less? No, 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 His mouth was full of Turkish delight. At last, the Turkish delight was all finished, and Edmund was looking very hard at the empty box, <laughs> wishing he could ask her for some more. Probably she, probably the queen knew what he was thinking. And Edmund did not know what to do. More, more, more. He wanted more, more, more eating of Turkish delight. Oh, please. Son of Adam, I, I should like to see your brothers and your two sisters. Will you bring them to see me, please? Well, I'll try, said Edmund, still looking at the empty box. Because if you come again, uh, bringing them with you, of course. I should be able to give you some more Turkish delight. I can't do it now. The magic will only work once. In my own house, it would be another matter. Well, why can't we go to your house now? Said Edmund. Well, it is a lovely house. A lovely place, said the queen, and I'm sure you would like it. There are rooms full of Turkish delight. <laughs> And I have no children of my own. I would like to have a nice boy like you, and I could bring him up as a prince. And as a prince, you would then become the king of Narnia when I'm gone. While he was a prince, he would wear a gold crown and eat Turkish delight all day long. Oh, and you were so much clever and handsomer uh, than anyone that I have ever met. Oh, I think I should make you a, pre a prince someday. That is, when you bring the others to visit me. Well, why can't we do it now, said Edmund. His face had become very red and his, oh, his hands were all sticky from the Turkish delight. Oh, but if I took you there now, she said, I wouldn't be able to see your brothers and sisters and I very much want to know your charming relations. You are to be the prince and later on the king, that is understood, but you must have people to wait on you, nobles, and I will make 
your brother a duke, and your sister duchesses. Ah, there's nothing special about them, said Edmund. And anyway, I could always bring them to you another time. Ah, but once you were in my house, said the queen, you might forget all about them. You would be enjoying yourself so much. No, no, you must go back to your country now and come another day with them, you understand. It is no good coming back to Narnia without them. Oh, but I don't even know my way back to my country, said Edmund. That's easy, answered the queen. Do you see that lamp? And she pointed with her wand. And Edmund turned, and he saw the same lamppost under which Lucy met the fawn. Straight on beyond that is the way to the world of men. And now look the other way, and she pointed in the opposite direction. And tell me, do you see two little hills there above the trees? Ah, well, yeah, I think I can, said Edmund. Well, my house is between those two hills. So the next time you come, just look for the lamppost and then look for the two hills and walk straight through the wood and you'll reach my house. But remember, you must bring your brothers and sisters as I might be angry if you are to come alone. Oh, I'll do my best, said Edmund. <laughs> and by the way, said the queen, oh, you needn't tell them about me. No, it, let's keep this as a secret just between us, shall we? Uh, make it a surprise for them. Just bring them along to the two hills like, like the clever boy you are. <laughs> let's see if you come again and then, hmm, Turkish delight. And I must see that fawn who met your sister. Oh, yes. Oh, please, please, said Edmund. Please, could I just have one more piece of Turkish delight and then I'll go home? Uh, no, 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 laughed the queen. You must wait until the next time. While she spoke, she signaled to the dwarf to drive on. But the sled swept away out of sight. And the queen waved to Edmund, calling, next time, next time, don't forget, come soon. Edmund was still staring at the sleigh when he heard someone calling his name. And looking around, who should he see but Lucy. Lucy was coming from another part of the wood. Oh, Edmund, she cried. So you've gotten here too, isn't it wonderful and all? Oh, all right, said Edmund. I see you were right, it's a magic wardrobe after all, and I'm sorry I treated you like that. But where on earth have you been all this time? I have been looking everywhere for you. If I'd known you had gotten here, I'd have waited for you, said Lucy. But I was too happy and excited to notice. She was too happy and excited to know how snappy Edmund was when he spoke. Well, you see, I've been having lunch with the fawn, huh? <laughs> and he's very well. And the white witch has done nothing to him for letting me go the other day. <laughs> so she hasn't found out that I've been in Narnia at all. The white witch, said Edmund. Who is she? Well, she's a terrible person, said Lucy. She calls herself the queen of Narnia, though she has no right to be queen at all. And all the fawns and all the animals and all the good creatures, they are afraid of her. She does horrible things to them. And she has made magic so that it is always winter in Narnia and never Christmas. And she drives about in her sleigh drawn by the reindeer with a wand in her hand and a crown on her head. Oh, Edmund was already feeling a little uncomfortable having eaten, first of all, too many sweets. And when he heard about the lady and that she was very dangerous. He really felt uncomfortable. But as all he could think of was the taste of the Turkish delight. Um, who told you all that stuff about the white witch, Edmund said. Mr. Tumnus the fawn, said Lucy. You can't always believe what fawns say, said Edmund. Who said so, said Lucy. Everyone knows it, said Edmund. Ask anybody you like, and it's pretty poor that you're standing here and we're standing here in the snow and it's so cold. No more questions. Come on, let's go home. Oh, let's, said Lucy. Oh, Edmund, I'm so glad you've gotten here too. Now the others will believe 
us both that Narnia is here and it will be so much fun. But Edmund secretly thought, mm hmm, it was not going to be a lot of fun. And he would have to admit to Lucy that she was right before all the others. Uh uh, he didn't want that. And he did not want her to know that he was on the side of the witch. What would she say? What would the others say? By this time, they had walked a good way. Then suddenly, <clears throat> they felt coats around them instead of branches. And the next moment, they were standing outside of the wardrobe in the empty room. I say, said Lucy, you do look awful, Edmund. Don't you feel well? <laughs> I'm all right, said Edmund. But it wasn't true. He was feeling very sick from too much candy. Come on then, said Lucy. Let's find the others. We have a lot to tell them about our wonderful adventures together. Okay, open up your memory banks. Chapter five, back on the other side of the door. Chapter five, back on the other side of the door. Chapter five, back on the other side of the door. And I'll give you a sneak preview. Here are the children with the professor. And there they are. And I have a surprise for you, too. <laughs> Do you know what I'm going to send home? A recipe for Turkish delight. And you can make it with your moms and dads. And then you'll have to tell me, is it as delicious as Edmund said it is? We'll find out. Now, did you ever think of how is it that C.S. Lewis got the name Narnia? How did he come up with that idea? He knew about a book. He had to find the secret country. Well, guess what? A long, long time ago, in ancient Roman civilization, there was a colony named Naria. And C.S. Lewis remembered that. Ah, and to this day, there is a town in Italy named Naria. And there's a church there. And you know what the name of the church is? St. Lucy's, ah, just like our Lucy. So come back next time and don't forget, don't remember, remember chapter five of the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. See you next time. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.